This video is the first in a series that will talk about what I refer to as fiscal stress. Now, as I think, I hope these videos will make clear, I believe that fiscal stress is perhaps the biggest macroeconomic problem facing the United States and advanced economies. And that's why I think it's worthwhile spending a fair amount of time trying to understand what the nature of the problem is, and maybe even some of the possible solutions. So maybe we should start by making clear what fiscal means. Fiscal just pertains to the, uh, the government's choices. of spending and taxation. So anything the government does that affects how much it spends or how much it collects in tax revenue uh, would be considered fiscal. So then what is the fiscal deficit? Well, you're going to have a deficit any time total government spending exceeds the taxes that they collect. So anytime it's greater than total revenues. Okay, that should be pretty clear. Now, one thing about deficits that's important to remember is that deficits fluctuate. And what I mean by that fluctuate is that they tend to um, fall during economic booms and they tend to rise during recessions. So it's perfectly normal for deficits to uh, rise and fall over the business cycle. They rise during recessions because those are times when income has fallen and therefore tax revenues have fallen and also certain kinds of government spending have increased naturally, things like unemployment compensation um, and so forth. And then of course the opposite occurs during booms. So then what do I mean by fiscal stress? Well, I'm going to talk about two manifestations of it. The first is what's going on in the short run. And here I'm referring to primarily the consequences for uh, deficits and government debt of the recession. Now, as I said up here, during recessions, deficits tend to rise. And at times when deficits are rising, the government pays for them by increasing borrowing, which means they sell more debt. But the second one is what I think of as the long-run manifestation and this is going to be related to programs like Social Security and Medicare. Those are the two biggies. And it's an outgrowth of the demographic changes that are occurring in the United States and many advanced economies. Now, the short-run fiscal stress is what is getting all of the attention these days in the media. But the long-run fiscal stress is what I think is the real problem. And this video is going to focus on the short run. The short run fiscal stress that has received a great deal of attention in the media and has been the source of apoplexy for a lot of political leaders can be seen in some straightforward data. So the first point to remember
is that this recession was a whopper. And if you went to the Minneapolis Fed webpage, where they compared this business cycle to others in the post-war period, you would see that uh, quite clearly. What this graph shows is this sort of beige line is potential GDP. So that's the path of GDP that would have occurred if the economy had just grown in some smooth fashion. Now what happened to actual GDP is in this light blue line and you can see that in this recession it fell dramatically. And what's even more stunning is that since the recession ended it has just been going along parallel to potential GDP rather than returning to this long-run growth path. Now this line out here is the Congressional Budget Office's projection of what will happen to GDP in coming years and it does eventually get back to potential but you can see that it takes until 2016. Now this might even be optimistic who knows it could be that they will just run parallel for a longer time and then maybe eventually come back we just don't know. The point about this is that this gap that we're seeing here has important implications for the size of the federal budget deficit. To see the effects of the recession on the budget deficit, let's look at the two components of the deficit. We have here outlays, which is total government spending, and revenues, which of course is total government tax receipts. And in this recession, we see this big run-up in outlays. Part of this was the uh, stimulus packages that that President Bush and Obama put in place, but part of it is just what happens over the business cycle. When you go into an economic downturn, things like welfare payments, unemployment compensation, and so forth naturally rise. At the same time, we saw that revenues just fell out of bed. So income fell sharply, and with that, uh, tax revenues fell sharply. So the gap between the light blue line and the dark blue line is the budget deficit. And you can see that in recessions that gap tends to widen. So here's the 2001 recession, here's the 1990 recession, and here's the 1981 recession. So you take the difference between outlays and revenues and what you get is the budget deficit. And again what jumps out at you is how truly large the increase in the budget deficit was. This is as a percentage of GDP and so at its peak it was about 10 percent. Now, so what? Was this something that just happened in the US? No. It's something that hit all advanced economies. So this red line is what the budget deficit is as a share of GDP in the advanced economies and you can see that across all of these advanced economies there was a very large increase in that deficit. That brought the increase the average in the world as a whole down. Now emerging markets were not affected quite as severely by this and you can see that in this yellow line where their deficit, the increase in their deficit was substantially smaller than uh, in the advanced economies. Now how did governments pay for these deficits? Well they just paid for them by borrowing and that's why we see this very large run up in public debt as a share of GDP. So in advanced economies as a whole the average is about a hundred percent of GDP. Now there was an uptick in the world uh, in general, but in emerging economies debt as a share of GDP actually fell. Now to get a little bit of perspective on this we want to look at a longer time series of government debt as a share of GDP in the United States. This goes back to 1971 and again what you see is recessions tend to be times when you had run-ups in debt as a share of GDP. Now, what people are so concerned about is look at the level of debt now, it's in the neighborhood of about 70% of GDP.
These projections by the Congressional Budget Office, incidentally, um, make different assumptions about what's going to happen to policy in the future, whether there will be, say, a continuation of the Bush tax cuts, which is what uh, generates this, this persistent rise in debt as a share of GDP, or if the sunset provisions in those tax cuts will actually be met, and therefore there'll be more revenue, and that will then retire debt back. Uh, a bit. To get an even broader perspective on government debt in the United States, I've plotted federal debt as a share of the economy going all the way back to 1790. And a couple of things jump out at you immediately. First of all, most of the big run-ups in debt are associated with wars. Civil War, World War I, World War II. Secondly, after these wars, debt as a share of the economy tended to retire back over a long period of time to a much more manageable level. And the most dramatic example of that, of course, is World War II, when at its peak it was over 100% of GDP, and then it was retired back to about 30% of GDP. Now, the exceptions that jump out are, first of all, the Great Depression, where we had a very large run-up in government debt that was not associated with the war, and what's going on today. The Reagan era is a little bit unusual in the sense that you could argue that it was a run-up due to a war, that was the Cold War, um, or you could see that, well, there were these big tax cuts at the federal level, and that that was a source of the run-up in debt. In any case, what is concerning a lot of people today is that federal debt as a share of the economy is as high as it's ever been, with the exception of World War II, and it's not associated with the war. What concerns me more than the current level of debt, though, is where government debt is projected to go in coming decades, and what you'll see is that the history of government debt uh, pales by comparison to where we are projected to be going. That is what I call the long-run fiscal stress.